lift me up and let me stand by face on heaven's table land well love and joy and light abound. Lord plant my feet on high everybody singing Lord lead me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land well love and joy and light abound lord plant my feet on high sing that again Lead me up and let me stand my face on heaven's table and well love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my on high stands the one I'm pressing on the upward way new heights in every day still praying as I award bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lead me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land well love and joy and light abound Lord plant my feet on high ground my heart has no that you stay where doubts arise and fears dismay though some may dwell where these are bound Lord plant and tame his And let me stand my face on heaven's table land well love and joy and light abound Lord plant my feet on high ground beyond the mist I feel would rise to raise beneath on clouded skies over storm oil pieces pine by those who dwell on high
just kill the utmost height, go up away, and had the fight, my son, while climbing, shall resound, Lord, be me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land where love and joy and light abound Lord me stand by faith on heaven's table land where love and joy and light abound Lord plant my feet on higher ground Lead me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land where love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my feet on Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. I 
Lord, lead me up. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you, Lord, because you are the God of power and a God of all possibilities. And you grant power and faith and courage and boldness and fearlessness to your people. And Lord, we pray at this time that your power will still come into everyone so that, Lord, Whatever we face in the coming days, whatever we face in the coming year, Lord, the power to overcome, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, our mind will be centered on your word. Our eyes will be looking on you. Our hearts will be meditating on your word, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we know we're going to overcome in every challenge and every difficulty in Jesus' name. Temptations will come, trials will come, troubles will come, persecution will come. Lord, because we know everyone that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And therefore, Lord, we pray in times of persecution, in times of pain and pressure, in times of trials and temptation, the power to stand solidly upon your word, your grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. That, Lord, every day and every moment it will be for us to glorify your name. We pray, Lord, as you lead us into this message now, the power to go forth and to go out and evangelize all around us. You grant to everyone in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered already. And all we need to be able to do, everything we need to do, you'll grant unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. And we thank him because of what he has emphasized to us. That here we are on earth, pilgrims on our way to heaven. And as we're walking along, there'll be detractors and tempters that will not want us to get to the edge of the journey. That's why the Lord has brought us together here so that he will equip us and he will prepare us it will empower us so that all the power we need, all the strength we need, all the ability we need, all the skill we need, not just to do something within a few hours or a few days, but to walk confidently, courageously, and fearlessly and boldly in the kingdom and walking all through life victoriously. That's why he brought us here. And I believe he has strengthened us already. And the strength of the Lord will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. He has empowered us. Power for the present hour. Every day of our lives, we're going to keep on experiencing that power in Jesus' name. We will not fail. We will not fall. Because the power of the Lord will hold us up in Jesus' name. Now he wants us to go out and do exploits. Exploits through Pentecostal witness. Before Jesus left his disciples, here is what he gave them Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. He says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to how many? Every creature. The Lord Jesus Christ led a great commission. 
And he says, this is the great assignment I'm giving you. I have died. I'm going to now go to heaven. He's died for the world already. He shared his blood. But he said, everybody must know about this for their salvation. Everybody around you, everybody in your community, everybody in your stage, everybody in your region, everybody in the nation, everybody everywhere. So he said, go ye into all the world and do what? Tell me out loud. And preach the gospel to every creature. It says, proclaim that gospel. Announce that gospel. Spread that gospel. Tell everybody around you in your world that Jesus Christ died for the sinner. Tell everybody around you that Jesus Christ is the Savior and he is the only Savior. Go ye therefore into all the world, he said, and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is the good news. The good news of salvation. The good news of the grace of God. The good news of the love of God. That God loves everyone and is not willing that anybody should perish. Tell everyone, say that to everyone, preach that to everyone, emphasize that to everyone. The number one thing you ought to do, if you are not able to do any other thing, this is the number one thing a believer, a child of God is supposed to do. Telling the gospel, preaching the gospel, proclaiming the good news of salvation and the good news of the mercy of God, of the love of God unto everyone around you. And he said, go. That word go is a verb, a word of action. Not just you see it in church, or worshiping in church, or singing in the church, or praying in the church, or doing maintenance in the church. Go. Go to the people out there. The people in the world, the people who are sinners, the people that need to hear of the word of salvation. And then it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. I pray that our people will not be damned. Your relatives will not be damned. Your friends will not be damned. Even your enemies will not be damned. That's why it says, if they're not going to experience damnation, if you are not going to perish already, the love of God is manifested in sending Jesus Christ to die for us. And now the responsibility is for you to go and tell them and go and tell everyone around. And then he says in verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Now signs don't follow people who are just sitting somewhere. It follows people on the go. Who are following people who are on the move. The people who are taking the gospel and taking it everywhere, those are the people that the power, the anointing, the gifts of the Spirit, and the manifestation of supernatural power will follow. And then it says, This sign shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. And then he goes on to say, They shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and it shall not hurt them. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. He says, They shall lay their hands on the sick. What will happen? What will happen? Now, you need to pay attention. I've been mean, emphasizing coming back to the Bible. Coming back to the Bible. It says, They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall do what? Recover. It doesn't say only the pastor will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They, all the preachers, all the people who are going forth, all the believers who are going forth with the good news, who are going forth with the transforming gospel. We are the people, not just one man. Everybody, as we rise up, in the power of the Lord and in the strength, in the might of the Spirit of God. It says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And you know, sometimes, uh, even though we read that in the Bible, when it comes to the practice, then we contradict ourselves. That's why I told you, I said, now everybody is going, everybody is preaching, everybody is going to take the gospel everywhere. Every Sunday, now when we finish the service, 
at the end of the service, whether it's combined service or it's your local service in your district, in your group, anywhere, the moment we finish, we go into the world to preach the gospel to every creature. I want to see the pastor. We've seen enough of the pastor. Now, if you're sick, tell the brother around you, I have this problem. Can you lay hands on me? You will recover. I said you will recover. We don't have to wait for some special people now, appointed people, anointed people, the pastor or this one or that one. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then it says, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and at the right, he sat at the right hand of God. And they, and they did what? And they did what? And they did what? Tell me out loud, everybody. They went forth. That's, you know, obedience. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, we must obey. Obey. It is when we obey the word of God, then the signs will follow us. This is the beginning. Beginning of spiritual activity. And beginning of going forth everywhere. So that as you go, as you go, as you go, as, you, as everybody goes, then the preaching of the gospel is taking place everywhere. And many people are coming to know the Lord in Jesus' name. And they went forth and they preached. Where did they preach? Where did they preach? Everywhere the Lord walking with them. The people that are going to see the Lord walking with them in Pentecostal power. In Pentecostal supernatural anointing. They are the people that go forth. They went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them with signs following, confirming the word. There's an amen there that is left for you. Where are you? Amen. Or looking at chapter 24 of Luke. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 45 then. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. I pray that as we are going through all these verses of scripture, the Lord will open your understanding in Jesus' name. And the Lord is revealing to us his word, but then they are still, still in the past. And while the future is coming on, while the Lord is leading us to something new, something higher, something greater, they are still bound in the past and they allow their past to destroy their future. Listen to me, they allow their past to destroy their future but in the case of these disciples the lord opened their eyes opened their minds opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and as we understand the scriptures we're moving on i said we're moving on and then it says and said unto them thus it is written and thus they behold christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Ye are witnesses of these things. Then he said in verse 49, he said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. And that power is to preach. That power is not just for you to sit at home. I've got the power. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got this. I've got that. It's the power to be a witness, an effective witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Acts of the Apostle chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. I'm reading to you from verse 27. And when they had brought them, they sent them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? That's what we are living for. That's the only thing we are supposed to do. And then they commanded them, they said, We told you, don't preach in this name. And then it says, but now, behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than, tell me, men. We are going to say that together. We ought to obey God rather than men. Can you say that with me? 
we ought to be God rather than men. We ought to be God rather than men. Say that aloud. And as we go out, we're going to do it in Jesus' name. Evangelism will be a focus. Reaching out to perishing souls will be a focus. That is what we gave our lives for. And that is what Christ has commanded us. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. And when we do it in the way he wants us to do it, and then we listen, emphasis on things that Christ has not commanded, and we exalt, we lift up what Jesus Christ has commanded, exploits, supernatural power, miracle signs and wonders will follow us in Jesus' name. And you know the people that are asking for miracles, you know, this will happen, this will happen, they will not happen except we concentrate on what Christ has given that power. The power to do miracles, what he has given it for. We're talking about exploits through daily but, but Pentecostal witness every day. It's not just you just do one day, one Saturday or one Sunday, and then you forget all about it. It's every day. Daily Pentecostal witness. I'm coming to you. Three points. Number one, the call. Number two, the concourse. And number three, the comforter. Number one, the call to daily persuasive witness. The call to daily persuasive witness. The call. That's a commandment. That's a commission. That's the call he has given us. And it says the call to daily persuasive witness. Number two, the concourse with divine prevailing weapon. We have a weapon in our hand. We have the instrument in our hand. We have the tool in our hand. And he has given us this weapon. It's divine. And it makes us more than conquerors. The conquerors with divine prevailing weapon. Number three, the comforter and his penetrating wisdom. The comforter and the penetrating wisdom, the spirit, not the wisdom of man, that cannot obey God, but the wisdom of the Spirit Himself, the Comforter, and His penetrating wisdom. Number one, the call to daily persuasive witness. We're looking at Acts chapter 1 again. Acts chapter 1. We're looking at verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But it shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Witnesses not unto yourself, witnesses not unto your denomination, witnesses not unto your friends, witnesses not unto your own personal opinion, but witnesses unto Christ. What does that mean? That Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, that he died to save sinners, and that his will, his desire, his passion is to have the whole of the world to be saved. He is not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Go and give a witness to that, that Jesus Christ so loved us, he died for the world, and give a witness to that, that God in heaven does not want to judge anyone to go to hell. He wants everybody to repent and to turn unto the Lord. Go and give a witness unto that, that there's no other name whereby we must be saved. It is only Jesus that brings the salvation. Go and bring a witness to that. He says, shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto that Thomas part of the earth. Look at that word, both. It also say first in Jerusalem. When you finish in Jerusalem, then go to Samaria, Judea. When you finish in Judea, then you go to Samaria. Then when you finish in Samaria, then the uttermost part of the earth, they are ready. No, it says he was telling not just one man, not just one man, he was telling every one of them. He said, you are going to receive the power. How many of them received the power on the day of Pentecost? How many people? Tell me out loud. 120 and all the 120 people that got that power he said you'll be witnesses unto me and then we will have the holy ghost and the power of the lord upon us we have in that power the holy ghost we reach out and as we reach out the lord will bless the people and save the people in jesus name acts of the apostle chapter 5 acts chapter 5 it tells us in verse 42 
Acts chapter 5, verse 42. It says, and daily, every day, every day, and daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not they, not just one man, they, not just one leader, they, not just one pastor, they, not just one cheers. It says, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Is telling us then that this commission and this call and this commandment had been given to every one of us and the early church this is what they did they rose up in the strength of the lord in the power of the holy ghost and they did what they ought to do we're going to do it in jesus name whatever it is you're doing that replaces this commission and you're giving an excuse and saying, because I'm doing this, I'm doing this, which the Lord has not commanded. They're good things, they're good things, they're good things. But the Lord has not commanded them. And then the better thing, the higher thing, the greater thing that the Lord has commanded, if we're not doing it, then that's not the will of God. And he's not talking to people who say they're workers, not workers, every member of the church, everybody. When we say, did you go for evangelism? Ah, sir, I'm not a worker. What do you mean? Did you join the people to reach out in the strength of the Lord? I'm not a worker. I'm asking, what do you mean by that? All the 120 people in the early church that waited in the upper room, not just workers. Those were the people that saw Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And then they all received the Holy Ghost and then they were the witnesses. And they are the day here, they, every house. Every place they were, they preached the word of God. It, it has come to your turn. You will do it. I said you will do it. Look at Acts chapter 8 verse 4. Acts chapter 8 verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. They that were scattered abroad. All the believers in Jerusalem, when persecution came, they were the people, anywhere they went, they didn't say, Apostle is not here, Evangelist is not here, the prophet is not here, and the pastor is not here, the teacher is not here, there's nothing we can do. You know, there are some people, they go to a particular place, and there's no deeper life there, and they just, they just fold their hands fold their hands and then anytime then they write all they know is to write letter they say uh, gs pastor i'm over here there's no deeper life that you are there who are you are you not deeper life why don't you start something saint dorsey pastor you are there are you not the pastor there saint dorsey soul winner are you are there are you not the soul winner there i we want deeper life to start in this place we're only about seven eight people here saint dors somebody to lead us are you not a leader there among you seven people can't you start something over there philip alone went to samaria as the persecution drove everybody away and when philip got there there was no partner there was no choir there was no singer there was no usher there was no supporter there's no prayer warrior this man alone philip because of the spirit of god that he had he didn't send to jerusalem send us somebody go you are you are the somebody there why don't you read the scriptures all over again and understand that this is the great commission the Lord has given to us anywhere we are now, church will start there. I said anywhere we are now, church will start there. You are in the village over there, start something. You are in the city over there, start something. And then after Philip started, he then sent to Jerusalem, not to come and evangelize, but to just tell them, give them information. There's a great revival over here. And then they sent Peter and John, and then they were able to do the rest. The Lord has given us a calling. And we're going to fulfill the calling in Jesus' name. Number two, come cross with divine prevailing weapon. Come cross with divine prevailing weapon. We're going to conquer. I said we're going to conquer. We're those come cross. We're looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. It says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than come cross through Christ, through him that loved us. You know, Paul was the one that wrote this. He didn't say, and through all this, in all this, sin, I am more than, con than a conqueror. He's talking about we. It's the whole church. Everyone that names the name of Christ. 
everyone that has the power of the Holy Ghost, everyone that has that anointing, we are more than conquerors through Christ who has loved, who loved us. Did he love only the apostles? Yes or no? Did he love only the apostles? Yes or no? No. Did he love only the men? Yes or no? No. Did he love only the special people, selected people? Yes or no? No. He loved everyone. Everyone that came into the kingdom. Because he so loved the church, he gave himself for the church. It's the whole church. And he's saying, all the people that he loves, he has made us more than conquerors. And he puts a weapon in our hand. That weapon will do wonders in Jesus' name. Am I the only one that believes the word of God here? I said that weapon, that weapon the Lord has put in your hand and in my hand. And our hands together, the weapons will do wonders in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at this. The weapon he has given us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading from verses 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapon he has given us, any village will go, we go, we're going to pull down the strongholds. Any community we go, we're going to pull down the strongholds in Jesus' name. There is no fear in our heart, no timidity in our life. That you know, we cannot preach the gospel there, we cannot go over here, we cannot go over here. Everywhere you go, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, the Lord will give you that place in Jesus' name. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, they are mighty. A mighty throw the Lord himself casting our imaginations and every high scene that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The time has come. I said the time has come. You will do it in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. This is for you. This is for me. This is for everybody. The weapon of our warfare that makes us more than conquerors on the field. As we go and preach the gospel, as we go and emphasize what the Lord himself, what he has emphasized. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. We have overcome. I said we have overcome. I have overcome. I have overcome, not because I am pastor, but because of the word of God, because of the promise, because of what Jesus has done, because of the Holy Ghost that abides within me. And the same thing you have, you have the name of Jesus, I have the name of Jesus, you have the promise of God, I have the promise of God, and you have the blood of Jesus, I have the blood of Jesus, you have the Holy Ghost abiding in your life, I have the Holy Ghost abiding in my life because of that Holy Ghost, because of that blood of the Lamb, because of that name of Jesus above every other name, because of that you will overcome. It says, ye of God, little children, not only apostles, not only preachers, not only pastors, everyone, ye of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You will overcome. It's in First John chapter 2, verse 14. First John chapter 2, verse 14. It says, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him. That is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. How did they become strong? And the word of God abides in you. The word of God that you have heard. The word of power, the word of his promise, and the word of his prophetic utterance that you have had, that word abides in you. And it says, because that abides in you, you are strong, and you have overcome, in that verse 14, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Thank God, as you go away today, and you go to many places, and you are preaching the word, you will overcome in Jesus' name. Now, when will you start doing what the Lord has commanded us to do? This evangelism we're talking about, and this uh, preaching the gospel everywhere we're talking about, when are we going to start? 
You in particular now. When are you going to start? Will you do that? I said, will you do that? I said, will you do that? Everything that we have got, all the knowledge we have got, now that she you knows that you are there, you are there, you are there, and by the grace of God, since you are there, there's going to be a kind of breakthrough and revival, bringing many souls into the kingdom. But when are we going to start? Will you start today? I said, will you start today? Start right there where you are. The point number three is the comforter and his penetrating wisdom. The comforter and his penetrating wisdom. We're looking at John, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading there from verse 15. The comforter has come already. And when the comforter comes upon your life, gives you wisdom to proclaim the word and to preach the word. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. This commandment is going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If you love me, keep my commandments. Suspend the things I have not commanded. And then bring to the forefront what I have commanded. And then it says in verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever that he may abide with you forever for how long will the comforter be with us forever that means every moment that means every day that means every time that the comforter is right there and he's saying i'm giving i'm praying to the father and as i pray to the father he will give unto you another comforter and that comforter when he comes what will he do look at verse 26 in chapter 14, verse 26, it tells us what that comforter will do. When he comes, it says in verse 26, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Chapter 15, in chapter 15 of John, chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He, the Holy Ghost, will testify of me. Then verse 27, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. When the Holy Ghost comes, that's what he does. That's what he does. He makes you to bear witness. There will be no fear in your heart. There will be no timidity in your heart. Then you are going to rise up in the bus, on the street, at the bus stop, anywhere you are. Anywhere there's a living soul. Even if he is born again, don't assume. Is, are you born again? He says, yes, I'm born again. Don't, don't just leave him because he said, I'm born again. Tell me your testimony. How did you get born again? If he's slow, tell him your own testimony. I said, this is how I came to the Lord. I just realized I was a sinner. And then the conviction came upon me. And then I realized, just turned over a new leaf, and going to church and doing this and that, couldn't save me. And then I realized that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross of Calvary. And then I repented and turned away from all my sins. And I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm telling the peace and the joy and the assurance and the certainty that came to my life. And my life turned around. Things changed completely. That's how I know I'm saved. And then you say, tell me your own now. And then if he's not able to tell you clearly, then you tell him what he will do. Realize you're a sinner. You cannot save yourself. Jesus died for you. Repent of your sin and come to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Salvation will take place right there. On the street, salvation. In the church building, salvation. In the bus, salvation. On the train, salvation. In the airplane, you're sitting with somebody in the airplane, you're witnessing to that person quietly there, there'll be salvation there. Everywhere we go in this nation, everywhere we go in this continent, anywhere we go in this world, there'll be preaching everywhere, there'll be salvation everywhere, there'll be repentance everywhere, and the Lord Jesus Christ will be following you up with signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Do you have any candidate there, any candidate there, any candidate ready there that the signs and wonders will follow you? And that you're going to go out to preach the word of God. Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, here am I, I will do it. Here am I, I will do it. Anywhere we are, anywhere we go, anywhere we find ourselves, the Lord is calling us and the Lord is saying, this is what you do. Is the commission for the whole church. 
It's a commission for the whole church. It's a commission for all the believers. Everybody rise up now and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I've had your word. I'm going to abandon that which you have not commanded. I'm, not, I'm going to put aside that which you have not commanded and that which you have commanded. That which you have commanded. I'm going to give my heart, my life into it. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And in this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in my name, in my name, they will cast out devils. In my name, he says, in my name, they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Tell them, tell them, tell them that Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Let that be your assignment every day. Don't wait for Sunday. Don't wait for Saturday. Don't wait for the month ending. And don't wait for just a special time. It's the duty, it's the responsibility of every day. Go out and do it. Go out and do it. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Abandon that which God has not commanded. Don't let the good thing stop the better thing. Salvation. 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 Telling people of their lost condition and telling them how they can come out of that lost condition. Let the fire burn in your soul. Let the desire, the passion rise in your heart. I give your heart, I give your life, give your resources to doing what the Lord has commanded. Evangelism. Not what you want, what she commands. Tell everybody around you, Jesus died for sinful men. Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Be a witness. Be a preacher. Be a soul winner. Go ye to all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. All the world. All the world. All the world. It's not a commandment for one man. It's not a commission for one man. It's a commission, a commandment, a call. For everyone. For you in particular. You've got the power already. You got the anointing already. You got the weapon already. You have the Holy Ghost already. Don't be among the people say, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this again. You've got enough. Now go and make use of what you've got and go tell the people. That Jesus died for sinful men. Show the people around you. Tell the people around you. What it means to be saved. This is your number one job. Number one assignment. Number one duty. Go in this your strength. If you have been emphasizing on important, on essential things. Come to conviction. 
come to understanding. Get involved with what matters for eternity. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. 